Backlog, the number one issue for almost every gamer out there that might or might not own a Steam account. Today, I wanted to talk about 10 ways that you can beat your backlog that I found that has been working for me across the last couple of years that I've been gathering quite a large number of games. And since I've been playing a lot of games in the past that were more in the multiplayer side, I've gathered a big list of games that I wanted to play along the way, but I never had the chance to do so. In today's video, I wanted to talk about this kind of things, what kind of methods you should apply in order for you to be able to reduce your backlog and as well enjoy your time playing the games. So here are 10 tips that I can give you in order for you to crush your backlog. Number one, play one game at a time. I know that this might be the most simplest way to put it, but it's true. Oftentimes we find ourselves picking up a game, playing for a couple of hours and after a while dropping it for another game that just came out or you just simply feel like you're burned out with the current game that you're playing or want something else. It happened to me multiple times in the past and I never got the chance to finish a game back to back or at least finish the campaign. So for me personally whenever I'm playing a game I'm trying to go for 100% completion when it comes to achievements but oftentimes I find myself that I play games that are very large and and it takes a lot of my time and it's very difficult to put down and sometimes I get distracted by picking something else or I tend to play something with Armea and I leave that game for a period of time to probably not go back to it again and that can happen quite often times if you keep on changing games or you're playing games in between so keeping it simple and sticking with one game back to back is gonna help you crush your backlog a lot more quicker than than you think. Playing multiple games at once and having the intention to complete them is gonna be rather difficult so it's better to stick with that. My tip number two for those who are more of a completionist I would highly suggest that you follow guides either be it on Steam, on PlayStation, on Xbox, wherever, on YouTube. They can be really helpful to get you through at least one playthrough so that you can clear out all the achievements with one playthrough and just leave yourself with the rest of the achievements that you cannot achieve in the first playthrough for another section if you plan to do so. I found that to be much more effective especially if you're going for collectibles or any kind of achievements that will take some time doing and having them played in a format like that will help you structure and get through each level or each chapter much more easily without having much of a problem. On number three, mix genres of games. And what I mean by this is don't stick with one particular genre in order for you to reduce your backlog because this may be an issue when you're playing something like a first person shooter and after you completed it you might feel burned out by going to another first person shooter and in the same time you might feel like you're gonna compare them even if you enjoy both of them you might look at them in a different way when you're playing them back to back so mixing them and choosing them based on different genres will help you feel much more fresh and in the same time if you have a large background like I do and you want to play all kinds of genres and all kinds of games this is gonna be easier to feel fresh and every time you jump in a different game you're not gonna feel in a way or another burned out by that particular genre. Another tip for number four is that when you choose to play a long game like a long RPG, a JRPG or an open world game after finishing it go for something much more shorter. Something that could be finished in a couple of hours, maximally maybe in 20 hours long with all the campaign and the completion if you plan to do so. I find that this may be the most effective way to not feel burned out, especially if you're playing this long hour games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla or anything of that sort where you have to invest hundreds of hours in order to complete. I found myself burned out pretty much easily after 
after that and I need a long break from them. So playing shorter games, feeling that I am completing still something else helps a lot to do so. So I highly advise that anybody who's going for this mix and match the genres and as well the length of the games. And an easier way to track what kind of length each game has is to follow websites like How Long to Beat, for example. And it is much more easier to see over there kind of what's the completion rate. Do keep in mind that websites like How Long to Beat can be a little bit misleading when it comes to the information that you get. So make sure you check in depth, especially if you're a leisure type of player. I tend to play games in a much more leisure way. So I tend to spend much more time with games that I enjoy. And if I'm not rushing to get them completed based on an event that I'm doing or something like that, I tend to take my time with them. And I think that you need to look at that and analyze, especially if let's say a game is on how long to beat for let's say 25 hours for the campaign, while the completion can be let's say for 100, I would rather take the 75 hours mark if you're not planning to complete it because you might get yourself swapped away in exploring and soaking in and doing a couple of side quests and other things that will take your time. For number five is to plan ahead your games for the next one to three months. And I know that this might be difficult, but if you have a good idea of what you're doing and what you're gonna play next, you're gonna have a good idea of how you're gonna finish them based on the stats that you are gonna gather based on how long to beat and as well on the type of games that may or may not require that much time. An adventure platformer game may be a shorter version and it's much more digestible while you're playing an RPG that could take hundreds of hours. So that being said, structuring them in such a way that you can mix and match them so that you can play maybe one to three games in a month back to back could be much more effective than actually not having a plan and just going with the flow. Now for number six, this can be a very simple and no brainer, but stop buying games as much as you can. Avoid going for Humble Bundle or Bundle Games on other websites. And as well, don't check out the store on Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo, or wherever you're purchasing your games. As much as possible, avoid those kind of things, especially the fact the new releases tend to go in good discounts after a couple of months, maybe even years, and you can get them at a higher discount, giving you more time to pick up games that are from your backlog instead of purchasing new ones, unless you intend to play them right away. I think this hits quite personally because I managed to gather quite the backlog and the wish list when it comes to games. There was a lot of them that I started collecting and growing since 2018, maybe 2019. And I started collecting quite a large number of them by checking out the store all the time and stuff like that. And that was due to the fact that before that, I was playing a lot of games that were online from multiplayer to MMORPGs to MOBAs to games of service. And that robbed me from having time to play single player games that I personally wanted. Now, of course, you can have games that are multiplayer in your backlog, but oftentimes I think that you should avoid playing those kind of games and focus on the ones that you have an objective of clearing them out. Oftentimes when you're going to play games that are online, their achievements, if you're following to go and get those achievements, are rather difficult to get and it will take quite some significant time until you can 100% that game. So avoid as much as you can games of service, online games, MMORPGs, MOBAs, or any kinds of games that are that kind of type that forces you to be online all the time, or it is rather difficult to crush your objectives by 100% the game or getting the platinum or anything of that sort. For number eight, know when it's time to actually move on from one particular game. If the game doesn't stick with you and you're having a frustrating time, let's say you're playing a soul-like game and you're really struggling to go through all of it because you're getting your whooped all the time or just struggling because a platformer is too difficult for you or any kind of genres that you are not very comfortable playing. And of course, if for example, you have games that you need to complete in a much more higher difficulty and you find them way too challenging or they're too difficult to overcome, I think it's a good idea to just consider not going through that and choosing a much more easier and healthier approach by 
moving on to the next game, something that you would more likely enjoy and crush your backlog in the same time. There's no point in dwindling in one particular game, even if you want to 100% it, because you're gonna just ruin your experience by getting frustrated because you cannot get through a particular boss or you cannot get through a particular level, and it's just gonna make the whole experience a lot more frustrating. So moving on to another game is a much more healthier approach than sticking with one game until completion as oftentimes you won't find any kind of benefit from it even if I enjoy to play games 100% I find that if a game is way too frustrating to complete I choose to maybe go and beat the campaign and do the side quests and then move forward with another game and at least I know very well that I was able to at least beat the campaign in that sense. Another way to take accountability of your games is to take part in challenges with maybe your friends that are playing the same game and you're playing alongside them or by going to websites where you can take part in this kind of backlog completions and a very good example is for example for PC users backlog assassins or if you want to go with another one on Steam is play or pay group so basically you need to play a particular number of games that other people will pick for you and you need to complete at least two of them in order for you to qualify and pass the test and you will be given seven options or seven games that you need to complete and two of them will be short then two of them will be medium size then you will have two much more longer or lengthier maybe to up to 50 hours if you want to go for and then you will have one very long game where you will probably spend over a hundred hours with so it's all your choice on how you can do that and having somebody who is checking you out or having a group of people that do this kind of things and a community that supports you to crush your backlogs help a lot to get through all that pesky backlogs and play the games that you want and as well introduce you to some games that you might not even know and I personally tried a couple of groups like that and I really had a good time with them because I got to experience to play some of my backlog games and as well some of the games that I won in other particular places and I was able to feel some sort of reward by completing alongside other people who are doing the same thing. So yeah, if you're finding much more interesting to be challenged by others, try out groups like that, play or pay groups where if you lose, of course, you have to give a game out or something like that. I know it's a little bit much more difficult, especially if you're struggling financially, but knowing that you are being challenged to do something and you have to do it because of that feels a little bit much more interesting, especially for a person who likes to complete games. And for number 10, don't strive to 100% a game or get the platinum or anything like that. Just beating the story and maybe going for the side quests is enough. And I can't stress enough how many times I've been trying so hard not to go for the 100% route, especially for games that I didn't enjoy playing that much. And it can be really tough and challenging to do so. So if you are a completionist out there, I can understand your frustration. I am one that does the same thing. But as I said, sometimes if you just want to go through your backlog and you just want to beat the games and do that kind of stuff, don't think about 100%ing the game unless you fully enjoy it and unless you think you can achieve those kind of things. Do keep in mind that going with a guide helps you quite a lot and there's so many other methods to enjoy the game. So take your time and enjoy the games. Don't rush anything. Don't force anything because games should be enjoyed and at the end of the day a backlog is only something that you form in yourself it's something that you want to achieve yourself but overall games should be enjoyed and you shouldn't force anything onto you unless you want to so yeah that's pretty much it that i wanted to talk about in this video it's pretty much something that i was thinking about sharing with you guys because i've been struggling with my backlog for quite some time now well i would say like 2019 and going Going forward and that is just because I discovered a couple of websites like Humble Bundle and Fanatical and I started picking up games in bundles and I started building up quite the large amount of games in my Steam account and despite the fact that I feel compelled to complete a large portion of them I have a couple of games that I must play in my at least entire life while I'm playing and those games are very much my most anticipated games
games or I've heard so many good things about those games and I have them listed out in a group called the Backlog Assassins and pretty much it's gonna be in the description below if you want to check what kind of games I've been trying to complete and I've been completing and yeah I'm, I'm having quite some uh, fun sometimes going through them and for me a game completed means finishing it to a hundred percent unless I know that the game is either a multiplayer game or maybe it is a game like a sandbox or it doesn't have achievements or it's an early access game and I'm waiting for it to be completed and I played a good portion of it I'm more likely to maybe not go back to it or I might revisit it but not consider to 100% the game because I don't plan to stick with them and I want to just experience as much as possible other good games as well and not feel like I'm constrained in playing that I've been playing a lot of MMOs when I was a kid and it carried over to my young adult time then I switched to a MOBA the League of Legends and I played that for quite some time and that robbed me for four almost five years of my life where all I did was playing League of Legends and nothing else and despite the fact that I wanted to play on my other games I always felt compelled to go and play that one so keep that in mind when you're planning to do so but that's pretty much all that I wanted to talk in this video thank you very much for watching and I hope that this video has helped you if it did giving us a thumbs up helps us a lot to reach to more people and subscribing to our channel helps us very much so because we are planning to get to 1000 subscribers and we cannot do it without your support turning on the bell notification also helps by staying up and informed every time we post something new and also I forgot to mention that if you want to join our discord I know we've been sharing a couple of times throughout our newer videos about the whole events that we're having we have a discord giveaway over there every single month and this month we're giving Plague Tale Requiem and the whole idea of joining our discord is very simple you have to just simply join our group and like and comment on any of our videos on our most recent videos on any video that you prefer it helps us a lot to reach other people and then you can take part in our monthly giveaway each monthly giveaway has pretty much the same rule and it does help us a lot to give out more giveaways in the future if of course we manage to reach to more people maybe even monetize the channel and stuff like that so next month we're gonna have in july diablo 4 which is a game that we enjoy very much and we've been sharing a couple of things on this channel as well we share a lot of other things that you might be interested in in game recommendations or listings i would like to call them as well game reviews so if you want to know anything related to that in the fantasy realm and other things that are game related game news and game updates this is a good channel to keep in mind and if you want to stay tuned subscribing helps quite a lot so thank you very much for watching my name is Vashal and uh, this has been a tell play discussion video maybe a to do video um, whatever you want to call it but I hope that this has helped you and I'll see you guys in the next video stay safe take care and happy gaming